and welcome to this new video of my DIY remote control project. Uh, what I have developed, uh, which I, what I think is one of the last feature uh, for my product, took really a lot of time because it was a uh, say quite complicated thing. Uh, um, but I think that the result is uh, very good, and I'm very pleased to to show you what I have achieved. Uh, before to start, I, as always, I would like to kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel uh, to support my work, to give a thumbs up to the video if you like it, and to hit the bell uh, if you want to stay tuned uh, with the next chapter of this uh, 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 fairly long project. Um, so, what is the the last the last feature that I have developed is something that I have already announced in another video, the previous one, which is the online firmware update. If you have understood the way it works my system, you know at this point uh, that uh, uh, I have uh, um, uh, several elements inside my console that requires uh, um, a firmware update. The main board, which you see here, and uh, all the channels. All these elements have its own uh, microcontroller. Everything is talking each other through UART protocol and of course given that each of each of these elements have a microcontroller each of these elements have a firmware a software and each of these elements requires uh, um, as consequence the, the possibility to be updated so what we see now is the uh, firmware updates on the main board we we'll see also the firmware updates on the channel which I think is quite uh, nice to see um, uh, you are already seeing here uh, the new uh, uh, display, touch display that I've implemented. If you remember fr uh, from uh, older version, I used to have a 10 inch display, which then I have eliminated because it was very costly and it was not really providing the value that I was hoping. I decided anyway to re-implement uh, uh, the screen because there are many features that uh, require this element. Uh, some of these you are already seen it uh, here. Um, uh, I will make another video talking about this uh, display implementation. Uh, here we will talk about uh, the firmware update uh, feature. So let's go uh, and start. Uh, first of all, I'm going to restart uh, my console. There you go. Uh, what you see uh, at the bottom uh, is the sign for the connectivity because now my board is connected through Ethernet uh, and then it gets got connected as you see. You see that uh, a, a message uh, has a, a appeared uh, uh, saying that there is a firmware update to be done. What's happened now is that the system has checked on my server where I'm exposing uh, some uh, REST API developed in C Sharp. Uh, is double checking the versioning and is uh, discovering that in fact there is a difference between uh, the version and uh, uh, that is installed inside the board, the main board of the machine and the one that is uh, uh, available online and so it requires the user to download uh, the, the update. So we're gonna download now, we're gonna start the procedure clicking on this, there you go. Uh, so here we see a message saying that there is a new version available for the main board. Uh, the version that is currently installed is 107, the newer version is 108. If you click, you go through and of course the message, a very important message saying that you don't have to power off the console during the update otherwise the system will, uh, um, uh, will blow up. Uh, of course it doesn't blow up but I mean it's gonna, it's gonna create a problem. Um, I don't have uh, a, a memory backup chip, uh, so this is really the, the real thing. Uh, if it's gonna go through an issue and you're gonna lose uh, the, the, the installation. Uh, uh, so it's very important, this is to say that it's very important to, to, to have the power on during this procedure. Of course you can cancel the procedure here, like this and restart it like that. And clicking OK, you will see starting the update procedure, which starts downloading the needed software from the server, you see. There you go. 
So as you have seen, uh, it downloads the software, it uh, uh, stores the software inside a part of the memory of the chip, uh, and is now ready to uh, reboot uh, and install, make complete the, the actual installation. I'm going to reboot. There you go. And there you go. So what's happened here? Uh, it happened that uh, after the uh, installation of the, uh, th sorry, the storing of the downloaded software in an area, in a backup area inside the memory of the chip, uh, it restarted. Uh, the restart launched a bootloader because of course each and every uh, MCU that you will see, uh, each and every process uh, that you will see uh, uh, right now uh, have a bootloader. The bootloader got a flag saying that at the restart got a flag saying that there was an available uh, uh, firmware update inside the backup memory, and so install so copy from the backup memory to the main area of the application the new software, and then restart again. Uh, close the say, uh, the flag saying that uh, it's done. It restart again. It launched the main application at this point with the new software. Uh, and so as you have seen now, uh, uh, we don't have anymore the flag here available uh, saying that uh, there is a new uh, firmware update because the main board is, uh, is, uh, uh, is gone and is complete. In order to double check that everything is, uh, went fine, we click here. Here you can see, uh, I hope you can see the, um, uh, the log. Inside the log, as you can see here, we say got online main board a firmware version successfully. Main board online is 108. Uh, if you remember, uh, the installed version was 107 and the new was 108. This means that uh, the uh, the new the newer version of the of the firmware has been installed uh, correctly. So let's move on now with the updates of the firmware in uh, inside the channels. Uh, as for before, I have now uh, published the newer version of the uh, software. Uh, so we're gonna restart the console like this. So first of all, the console, it gets connected to the internet through ethernet. And there you go. It gets connected and once again, it appears here uh, uh, the flag saying that there is a newer version of the firmware available. So if I click here, as you can see now, it, it says that the newer version is of the strip. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it's not the same as before. The current installed version is 108, the newer is uh, 109, and then there is the usual disclaimer. We're gonna go through now uh, the process, and during the process I will show you that this works in a little bit different way respect the one we saw uh, a minute before. So we're gonna go, we're gonna click here and gonna launch the process. So now uh, as of before is the download is uh, uh, saving inside the backup area and it start the installation. But of course this is not uh, asking the system to reboot as we saw before. What happens here is that uh, it uh, it uh, uh, transfer the software from the main board which took care of the download uh, to each uh, and every channel as you can see here. So each and every channel uh, receive again through UART the software. It stores the software again in a, in a storage part of the memory of the chip but this time is the chip of the channel is not the chip of the main board and then it restarts the chip of the channel with the bootloader that is performing the upgrade uh, as you, you are seeing uh, uh, right now. I'm going to accelerate a little bit the process because as you can see it takes a little bit of time and I will be then back uh, as soon as it is finished uh, to wrap up.
Okay, it started now the uh, update of the last channel, the eighth channel. So you will see that as soon as the update is complete, the main board uh, will notify this on the screen and will require us to uh, complete the process. It's rebooting now the channel. And there we go. So installation of the firmware successfully completed. I got the, clo the close button here. It make a new check and you see now that the newer version has been installed uh, and so that there is no, uh, not anymore the gap between the installed and the online version. So that's it. Uh, uh, I think the process works pretty much uh, well. Uh, I have to say that the, uh, the, um, there was two main issues in this development which took me really a lot of time. Again, this is the reason why you don't see, you haven't seen a new video for a while. The very first thing was the connection to the internet. And yes, I mean, in 2025, where connecting to the internet is really, it really looks like just, you know, a very normal activity that we do all the days. Uh, with our PC, with our phone, with our tablet, with our car maybe, uh, with our fridge, I don't know. Uh, if you go and develop the feature inside a microcontroller in C at very low level, you really discover and appreciate how complex is this operation uh, and how very well uh, tunneled and hided is uh, uh, from all the softwares that are installed in our, our, inside our device, making the things uh, very easy for the end user. But trust me, it's a very complicated method. Other very uh, second subject that was quite complex was the development of the bootloader. Uh, because of course, for all the operation that you've seen, the update on the main board, the update on the channel, I had to develop a custom uh, a TFU um, uh, bootloader, uh, which resides in the memory of the chips at the very beginning, where normally resides the main application. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, uh, 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 each and every time the, the, uh, the main board or the channel uh, is, bo is booting, have to make a choice. Uh, either it launched the main application or it launched the installation of the firmware. This is based on a flag which is in memory. Uh, of course, this implies that the main application is not installed uh, in, uh, in the, let's say, usual or, let's say, uh, normal position, which is at the beginning of the flash memory, but is installed a little bit ahead, uh, uh, surely after the uh, bootloader. Uh, this implies, uh, let's say, a series of, uh, uh, of uh, process that have to move uh, not only the software, but let's say the pointer uh, to some part of the, of the software, mainly the vector table and the reset handler, which, I mean, uh, in certain cases, like for the H7, wasn't that, that complicated because the H7 is, a, is, a, is a, let's say, a, a quite modern and serious uh, um, MCU and have uh, uh, a lot of feature in the in the um, in the uh, HAL framework that make this uh, this kind of operation easier. Where for the F0 that is inside the channel, the situation was much more complicated because it doesn't really work the same way. And uh, in order to move the pointer to the vector table and the reset handler, uh, you have to do a series of operations which are a little bit more complicated. But in all in all, I mean, all in all, everything is done now. Uh, following this video, there will be a new one uh, dedicated to the, uh, video, the new display application that you are seeing, uh, which I think is also quite interesting. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for following, and I'll see you in the next video where we will see uh, the new display implementation. Cheers. Mm -hmm.